I think that public funding for the arts matters an awful lot because um, not everybody gets the same opportunities. We all know that there's quite a lot of inequality in this country, um, financial um, and other kinds of inequality. And, and so public funding for the arts you know, means that a kid like me who, yeah, I got, you know, I got support from my family. Like, it's not that they try to talk me out of music. It's not that I didn't have music growing up, but that I got formal education, you know. Um, I got uh, opportunities to, to be exposed to the larger musical world through governor school, um, through coming to, you know, all the concerts that my dad used to, um, he used to work the Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening in the park, you know? Um, so I, I went to so many of those because he was working those and um, being exposed to music that takes a lot of economic support. You know, an orchestra takes a lot of financial support, you know, and to bring that to everybody takes then state and federal funding because of the way that we have set up our lives here and that's just the way we've done it. We've set it up so that um, not everybody has access to these things. So if you've got the organizations that are organizing these things, that are creating these moments for the public, for anybody to come um, and experience an orchestra, a choir, a reggae band, or whatever you're bringing in, then that means that you know the average person no longer has a way to donate to the idea that everybody gets to be exposed to the arts, you know? Like that's what those organizations are for. They're run by, you know, state and, and, and federal and local governments and that's what taxes go to and that's how people can then reap that benefit that they've put in, you know, by going to a, a, a music camp or going to a program or having their kids, you know, do whatever, all, all the things that are, are thought up, you know, for these things. and. You know, when you get rid of those organizations, then that just means that, you know, the people who have the money can afford the private lessons and everybody loses because that's only one point of view that is presented, you know, and the arts thrives from everybody, you know, being involved and everybody's point of view being presented, you know. Um, some of the most powerful pieces of art have come from historically marginalized people, you know, people who you wouldn't think would have access to these things, but through you know, public school, through public, you know, organizations, they have gotten the wherewithal to then create this incredible thing that then, okay, if you want to talk about economics, generates millions of dollars in, you know, uh, revenue, you know, because people want to, oh, what about, who, you know, well, it can also economically work too, but you have to start at the base and start and bring it to anybody, you know, so that you can catch those people who, given the, the opportunity to create that enormous thing. If you, if you gut it, if you get rid of it, then all those folks don't get an opportunity to do that and it's, it becomes much poorer and um, you know, we, just, we don't have near the beauty that we, we could have if we do that.